Have you ever whispered, I'll do it tomorrow to yourself? Then tomorrow becomes a week and then a month. Well, you are in good company here at Dear Dr. Becky. Today, we will be gently unfolding the layers of procrastination. I've received a letter that mirrors a struggle that many of us face, one that quietly affects our relationships and our self-esteem. Through a letter from one of you, we'll see how to break through the cycle of delay and regret and get the important things done in your life. I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Sarah, who is going to read the letter. Are you ready, Dr. Becky? Here we go. I'm Your ready. first letter. Okay. It says, Dear Dr. Becky, I'm reaching out because I'm struggling with a problem that's been haunting me for years. Procrastination. No matter how important the task is, I find myself completely delaying it. The habit is affecting not only my professional life, but my personal relationships with my family too. I always plan to start things I need to get done early, but then I find myself doing everything else and not actually the thing I need to get done. I tried various things like to-do lists, time management apps on my phone, but nothing really seems to work. I feel stuck. It's so frustrating. How can I overcome this perpetual cycle of procrastination and start getting the things that matter in my life done? Thank you for writing in Perpetual Procrastinator because you are not the only one alone in this struggle. In fact, procrastination is a common issue faced by so many people, including myself. I struggled with procrastination for many, many, many years. So I really want you to remember that it's important that to know that it does not reflect on your capabilities or your self-worth. Research offers some very fascinating insights into why people procrastinate. It's not just a matter of poor time management, but it's often linked to deeper emotional responses. Procrastination can be a way of coping with challenging emotions and negative moods induced by certain tasks. Think about it. The understanding shifts the focus from managing time to managing emotions, which is the key overcoming procrastination. I wish I would have known that when I was struggling. And there are also other ways that can help you with procrastination that I will share. But let's start with the underlying issue of managing our emotions. Procrastination can be a form of avoiding uncomfortable emotions associated with a task. For example, myself, I did not like to do math in school. So what did I do? I put it off till the very last second, which made it much more difficult. At first, I was avoiding the anxiety, the fear of failure, or even fear of success for many people. And that in itself makes me feel comfortable. The avoidance creates a problem because I'm really trying to avoid my feeling of inadequacy and vulnerability. I temporarily avoid these challenging feelings, but eventually, guess what? You got to face them. Let me give you another example. Procrastination for you might be a subtle form of rebellion or a way to exert control. And when you feel pressured and controlled by external circumstances, like deadlines or expectations, procrastination can be a way of asserting your own autonomy, even if it might be counterproductive. This can especially occur with individuals who have felt powerless or abused in their lifetime, and they definitely don't want to feel continued powerlessness. They have to exercise their autonomy and assert themselves. That's one way of doing it, even though, again, it becomes self-sabotaging. So I have a few little strategies that might help you out. Start with one or two of them and see if it works for you, but hang in there and stay with it. Don't quit if you try something the first time and it doesn't work. It really is an ongoing process. So one of my ideas is, first of all, develop self-compassion. Be kind to yourself. Understand that you, again, are not alone. Everyone procrastinates at some point and it doesn't define your entire work ethic or your character. Acknowledge that you have these emotions. Those are normal. It's uncomfortable to feel negative towards certain tasks and we don't want to face waiting those feelings acknowledging and accepting them is the key as you do so it can reduce the emotional power that it holds over you which then in turn can have some very positive emotions recognize that it's normal to have uncomfortable feelings towards certain tasks and instead of avoiding these feelings acknowledge and accept them 
By doing that, it can reduce the emotional power they hold over you. And that is empowering. Another thing you can do is understand your triggers. Pay attention to why you procrastinate. Are there specific types of tasks or times of day when you're more likely to procrastinate? This awareness can help you prepare strategies to counter the urge to procrastinate. As you discover those triggers, start thinking about how to counter those with different techniques and strategies. Reframe your thoughts is another thing you can do. Challenge and change your perspective about the task. Rather than focus on the potential negative outcomes, consider the positive aspects or the satisfaction of completing that task that you want to put off. It's so important to look at it from a positive way and focus on the side that will make you feel better, connected back to those emotions, will make you feel better instead of feel worse. Another thing you can do is set realistic goals. By breaking down tasks into smaller, more manageable parts, this makes them less overwhelming and helps in reducing avoidance behavior. Often getting started is the very hardest part, but much easier to do when you know you just have a small task instead of a huge one. Also, while you're doing this, create a supportive environment. Surround yourself with people who will motivate you and encourage you maybe sometimes assist you, right? That's always the best. Sometimes just talking about a task with someone else can help diminish its intimidating nature. And lastly, of course, always seek professional help if needed. If procrastination is severely impacting your life, a therapist can really help you understand and address the underlying issues that might be like anxiety or perfectionism or something else that you may not see. But a therapist can help you understand it see it, work through it. So remember, overcoming procrastination is a process and it's okay to have ups and downs and also always okay to celebrate those small victories and to keep moving forward. I am so wishing you the best on your journey to productivity. Thank you for writing in to dear Dr. Becky. And I hope that if you all loved our chat today, you will keep the conversation going by sending your questions to Dear Dr. Becky at gmail.com. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join our community. And together, we will start making mental health simple and accessible. And I hope to see you in the next video.